Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Roland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the wheel stand DD from the guys at Next Level Racing, promising to be able to stand up to the full power of the current DD wheelbase offerings out there. It's time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So let's get to it. Now let's take a closer look at the parts you get in your kit. We'll start with the wheel deck where we're going to be mounting your wheelbase. And this is a thick piece. This, it comes in about seven pounds, I think. It has some good heft to it. And three millimeter thick steel. And this has been put on a brake or like type of device and bent as far as the metal on the front and the back. And on the front piece, they've actually cut it so that the bend would give them the angle they needed. And then they welded it back in. And on the back here, you can see that this one's actually... The corners are welded also on both sides to attach them. So not only did they bend them, they actually weld them on there. They want to make sure this is stiff. And it is a hefty piece, and I don't think it's going to be a problem holding the wheelbase. As far as this plate alone, it should not have any problems. And again, it's like a powder-coated paint on here. I think this is paint, kind of a crinkle finish paint, because I do have some pieces here that are showing some silver, probably in shipping got bumped around or something. But it's on the bottom. Who cares, right? And... I, I kind of like the finish. It's, it's got a texture to it instead of just a high gloss, which would get scratched easy, or just a flat black. Um, I, again, and that's, of course, personal preference. <laughs> now, what I do like that Next Level Racing does on all their adjustment pieces, where we're going to do angle adjustments, is that instead of just putting a slot in and giving you a bolt and a nut, they actually drill individual holes. And these individual holes leave little ridges in them that will catch the bolt. And so when we tighten this down to whatever angle we want, it's not going anywhere. That angle will stay where it's at, which is a good idea for mounting direct drive wheelbases or when you're doing that. And if you just had a slot in here and the bolt and a nut, I guarantee you with a heavy 20 pound midge motor or something like that sitting on this and you're pushing on the steering wheel when you're, when you're driving it, I can get it to move. I guarantee you I could get that angle to change a little bit. But when you have this in here, that's not going to happen. And the only thing you give up is micro adjustment like per millimeter or something as, as of the angle of your wheelbase, which I'll take this any day over that because yeah, what's one millimeter, two millimeters, not going to make a big difference. But this is a very secure way to maintain your angle on any plate that you're going to be using. So yeah, I like the way they did this. And again, nice hefty piece, feels stiff, doesn't feel like any flex to it at all, which is again because of the bends and the welds they put in here. And we'll take a look at the next long piece. And this is... You can see the little angles on the side again, the holes drilled in. And this is going to be used for the pedal tray. All right. And we also have the bends in here, like the other piece that we just saw. And we do have a weld on the side here where it meets on the, this side, but it's an open space on the other side. And there's a weld there. And same finish. We got a hole here for the hinge as far as adjusting angle. And again, like we said, the holes here. Now, they also have some threaded inserts in here, and these are the kind of a stamp in, but they have a, a dual tool for this. You have something that's pushing it in, then on the back, they have another tool that actually pulls it up against the metal there, and you can see the crinkle. See how it's kind of wavy there? Well, that's showing up, but it's kind of wavy there, so it flares it out so it's a larger diameter than the hole it went in. Now, this should be very secure, and I, you can even turn these things. They, they're really stamped in quite well. And I like this kind of insert. Uh, of course, a weld would be the ultimate solution, but I've, I've seen a lot of people use these in the industry and never had a problem with them. M8 threads, by the way, and we'll be attaching the pedal tray to this, or this to the pedal tray, however that's going to work out. So let's take a look at that pedal tray while we're talking about it. And this is a massive piece here. It's almost nine pounds, <laughs> which is good. I like heavy pedal trays because that means that you, when, whichever pedals you mount to this should be relatively stiff or stationary, not moving on or flexing too much. But we'll see once we put a set of pedals on here. And I haven't decided what I'm going to use yet. We have these very long slots here, and that, of course, that's for adjusting back and forth. Very good that we have a lot of adjustment, and we have a ton <laughs> of slots in the tray itself. So I think just about any pedal set should fit on this, but I can't verify I don't have every single pedal set in the SRG. But yeah, this should pretty much cover the gamut, I would think. And again, a very hefty piece here. And I, I like the feel of this because just about everything in this kit, as you might imagine, being built 
to be direct drive wheelbase centric. It's going to be heavy duty stuff. Now here we have a couple of bars. These are the same. And these are the spreaders for what I'm calling the A-frame of the main assembly. And we're going to go over and take a look, check that out just in a minute here. And yeah, this is going to spread between the two pieces that are like the A-frame and give it support. And we have some angles here. And of course, we have M8 bolts stuck in the middle, which is nice. The bolts are already there. And we'll get to the assembly process and we can see more detail then. We also have some holes here, which I'm imagining is some kind of mount system that you can mount something to it and put bolts all the way through. So we have two of these and these are the same. Everything is the same. They had the plates here that are, this is actually bent down this plate and then it's welded. So I don't know how well the welds are going to show up here, but this part, you can see the bend there and then they actually put some welds in here and there's a, and get the light to reflect on a little and right about there. So again, well done. Everything seems to be good. No gaps in the welds. So pretty good welding there. Maybe it was a machine that did it. And we have over here the shifter mount, shifter handbrake mount. And this is going to sit like this. So the A-frame's got an angle going out to the front. So this has to be angled accordingly. And I like the way that they built this for support. So when I put a shifter and a handbrake or something like that on here, this should be able to hold it with no problem. Um, and again, just as far as it, it's going to be very stiff, as stiff as what it's attached to. But again, we'll see that in action once we're doing it. And here we can see that they put a, a little spreader here to support these flange, which I like that they did that instead of just having the flange hanging out here on its own because of the force it's going to have to support when we're doing our shifting. And they've supported that with another three millimeter, millimeter rather piece of metal there. And you can see we have welds on both sides of the plate and also on the top here the same deal welds on both sides of the plate so this seems pretty strong we got a nice weld here in the joint where this is put together and this is looks like all one piece that was bent see how it has that is smooth here so they actually bent this piece cut it obviously so that the bend could happen and then we have you can see the little line there where it comes together and how they secured it with the weld all right we got some holes in here and that's going to be for mounting our shifter plate. Now, shifter plate is a two-piece unit and it's made to accept a shifter and a handbrake. This is the piece that we'll be mounting and you can see the three holes right here. All right, we got them there and of course we have it in there. So it's going to kind of fit like this on the bracket. But again, when we're putting it together, we'll see more detail on that. And this is a two-piece unit where we have this for the attachment to the bracket Put that away. Okay. Well, let's sit it right here. It doesn't fall. And then we have this plate. And you can see that we've got lots of lateral room for mounting a shifter. And of course, we can mount a handbrake next to that. In their picture on their website, they show the Thrustmaster handbrake sequential shifter, two of those mounted to this. So that's what they show in the picture. But we'll see if I can mount two of the things that I have. <laughs> so on the bottom here, you can see that they have these little bolts in here. And we've got two nuts on each bolt. And one nut you're going to take off at least the last time i did one of these that's how i believe that's how we did it you take one of these off all right then we're going to set this down on the shifter plate and again we'll get to more detail in assembly and this bolt here acts as to hold this piece stiff right the little pin here and also as a spreader so that when we sit it on top of this we still have a gap a big enough gap to attach uh, or rather when you put your shifters and stuff on here that you can get in between here with a wrench and tighten things down. So that's kind of like a spacer thing. And then this will go on the bottom of the plate, this shifter plate over here to secure the thing to it, just like that. Pretty cool. And it's a very stiff mount. This is very nicely done as far as, again, a three millimeter thick steel and no flex in it at all. Just, just the right thickness, I think, for this size to keep anything like that from happening. And of course, this plate actually has some bends in it where they put it in the brake and done their bending or stamping and they've actually welded that. And you can see we've got a weld here supporting this part. And we also have welds here and on the other side over here. So yeah, in hand, again, very stiff assembly. No problem. I don't have no issues with that. It's very stiff. The only thing is, is the mounting. Is that going to be stiff so, also? So that's what we're going to find out once we get it put together. Now, before we go over to the A-frame and take a look at that real quick, I just want to show you some of the other goodies that you get here. And you also get this blister pack of bolts, which I kind of like this because you can actually put this upside down, cut it out, take it apart, 
And then you have all your bolts sitting on the table there, nice and neatly in a row where you need them. And they're even telling you what size they are. So when you get your manual out, let's see if I can get this out without breaking anything, it will tell you which one goes where, all right? And they have a PDF on their site too for the manual. And you can see that everything is nice and orderly. And this is also a good way for your manufacturer to make sure that you get all the bolts and nuts that you're supposed to, instead of just throwing them in a bag, right? So they do go the extra mile there. We got washers, big ones and little ones. And again, as we put it together, we'll see where these go. And they even throw in a chrome, what does this say? A chrome vanadium, 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 whatever you want to call it. Uh, supposed to be good steel, and that's a 13 mil wrench to help you assemble your unit with. And of course, we've also got a couple of Allen wrenches in here, but we won't be using those because I like using the Allen wrenches I have. Right, so nice blister pack, easy way to keep track of all your hardware. Now, there's two ways to do this. Now, I'm going to show you the picture here. You can see this picture of this with the main A-frame, we're going to see in a second here. It's got wheels on the front of it, all right? So there's two ways to do this, and they give you enough parts to do it both ways. Put the wheels on the front if you're going to be using it, and you need to push it around and set it somewhere else and get it out of your way. And they put some nice locking casters in here, all right? So everything spins very freely when you have it unlocked. You, can just, you see the wheel spin. <laughs> and, of course, we lock it once we don't want it to go anywhere. The only issue with the wheel compared to, and I'm going to show you the other feet, and of course, you put two of these on the back regardless if you use the wheels or not. They send, give you these big pads here. All right, and this is about a two inch diameter pad here, and it's, it's rubbery, not real sticky, tacky, but rubbery. And then we have a eight millimeter threaded shaft coming out of that with a nut to secure it, it looks like. It's probably, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm feeling in here is probably a counter bevel in this plate and then the, a flathead screw going in there and then the nut to secure it. Very simple. So this will go on the back regardless of what you do. But I think I'm going to end up putting these on the front also because it gives me more surface area for grip on the wheelbase. And I'm going to be using a pushing action when I steer the steering wheel in my direct drive wheelbase, whichever one I use. So I would want more surface area contact because if you look at this and you look at this, we know that our surface area contact is only going to be very minimal because it's a wheel, just like any tire or wheel. It, we've got a lot of surface area available, but yet it, when you stop it and lock it down, there's not much contact going on there. So I think that would be better for gripping if you had a big surface area like this on there on the front. That's how I'm going to set it up. But if you need the convenience of a wheel to push it around, then yeah, well, you got to do what you got to do, right? So what else do we get? couple of goodies in here in the the bag and this looks like we've got some cable management clips here these little plastic bits and you can see we have some ridges in them so you can run your usb cables and things like that and they will fit onto these square pieces like this there you go and you can see the get some white background on it now you can write your cables imagine that's what these are for that's the only thing i could think of right off hand could be wrong but i'm pretty sure that's what it's for so we get four of those so a little bit of cable management, which is nice. Then we get some caps here. And these caps are to be used. The only place I could find that I thought you could use these is going to be in the, and I'm going to show you when I get it over there, the A-frame itself, where we have these big access holes to attach these bars in the M8 bolts. We have some access holes on the other side of the square tubing over there. And this, you can snap these in to cover that hole once you have everything put together. And there's six of those, even though there's only four holes. Nice to have extra parts. We also get a couple of flat wrenches here and reinforcement plates for your casters. If you're going to put casters on, these will go on top of the casters like this. It's kind of a reinforcing thing for them, um, and, but you only get two of them, so I imagine the casters were the ones that would use it the most. All right, put that aside. And we get these cool wrenches. Remember, everything is thin when it comes to mounting these casters, and when you try to get up to, when you get to the very final uh, bit of length here that you're screwing in, you're not going to be able to get a regular size wrench in there because a regular size wrench is pretty fat. In fact, it's probably, you'd be lucky if it was the, the width of this, these two put together. So having a thin one's very nice so we can get underneath the, the tube there and still turn our nut and tighten things up properly. So very nice they just included that. Usually when I get kits like this, I keep these in my toolbox. I'll just throw them in my toolbox. And I got a bunch of these by now, as you might imagine, these very thin wrenches. And they come in handy in other use daily use around here at the SRG too, so it's nice to have them. All right, what else do we get? I think that's about it. You do get some extra stickers. Now the A-frame already has stickers on it, 
but in case you scratch them up, you can get some more here. And it's cool the way they ship these. These obviously have the adhesive on the back like every other sticker. I just lost one there. But it has this clear piece on it that you peel off, all right? And so that protects the top of the sticker while we're building stuff or while you're moving things around. And when you're finished and you got it where you want it, then you can take it off and it's nice and shiny and pretty. All right, so let me pick up my other sticker here. You do get one more thing. I was surprised to see this actually. <laughs> And it's a lanyard and a thank you card. And it's kind of a gift. See what it says there, a little gift card. I'm not sure if they're getting, putting these in all of them, but uh, one came in mine. And it's a lanyard, and it's got the next level, kind of a silky feel to it. It's got the next level racing logo on it. So if you have a radio control uh, RC kind of thing, you can use it for that. Or if you have, you work in a building that has security passes and the cards you got to use to get in, you can use it for that. So just a all around, neat little lanyard here and you can actually detach it so there's a little buckle here that you can actually take it on and off with if you don't want to slip it over your head right just little things like that kind of stand out to me so that's it on the parts now we're going to walk over it real quick and take a look at this a-frame and this is what it looks like folded out when they ship it it comes like this and it's folded up all right now you can still do that but once we have it assembled it's going to be a lot more difficult because Obviously, you'd have to take your spreaders that are going in between here to reinforce this A-frame off to be able to fold it up again. And of course, we'll be tightening up these bolts on the hinges to make sure it's good and stiff there. And you can see it has some decals on it and things like that. Very simple assembly here. Now, the uprights uh, for the wheel uh, plate support, the wheel deck, this is already installed and it comes shift this way. We've got a eight, M8 bolt, socket head cap bolt. We'll see that again closer when we actually get to it. And this is the bar that comes out of it. And this will have a bunch of holes in it. And we'll see that in detail later on. And they're threaded for M8 threads. And of course, this is allows us to adjust the height of our wheel duct to our preferred height. So it's nice that they come shift that way. It saves space. And yeah, we'll be taking those. And I probably won't even be taking these out because once I mount the wheel deck to it, I want them kind of sitting where I'm, they need to be before I set up the wheel deck. So a nice heavy-duty assembly here. This comes in at over 16 pounds. So this is like, with all this stuff put together, we're close to, you know, 40 pounds, 45 pounds or so, I imagine, uh, once we have everything on it. And then, of course, once you put your wheelbase on here and a set of pedals and maybe a shifter, it's going to weigh a lot more than. So, yeah, you might want the wheels if you need to move it. But if you have a static place you're going to be mounting it, again, I think the pads with, the, the, with a much more surface area than the wheel has would be the way to go. But we'll find out. Once I set that down, you know, I have this kind of a smoothed uh, concrete here. They call it a burnt concrete, but it's very smooth. I had them do that finish when I built the SRG. And yeah, I think it's going to be better to have those uh, pads on there instead of the wheels. But we'll see that once we get to that point. Now, the first piece that I'm going to put on here is going to be the spreader piece that we saw earlier in the Closer Look segment. And it's very simply going to go in between here like this. And we have two holes here in this A-frame, slide around so you guys can see it. These big holes here, and these are access holes, so we can get our bolt in here and attach to this cross piece, so that's what we're looking at. Now, I've already removed the bolts from the end of this piece, all right, and of course they come like this with the bolts already in, so I'm going to put that off to the side. And I have a six millimeter ball end wrench that I'm going to be using, or driver, what do you want to call it? And you know, how I usually do this, and of course there's many ways to get this done, but this is how I like to do it. First thing I'll do is, because this is a deep hole, and you can't really get your fingers in here, <laughs> so I'll take the bolt, this is a socket head cap, 8 mil, with the washer on it, all right? And I'll just kind of hold it like that on the wrench. And then I'll look down, down here where the hole is, and very carefully going through my access hole, and then through the hole on the other side. And you can see the threads came through here. Now I can kind of hold it steady with the wrench as I bring the bar up just to get this hole started. And what I'll do is look down in between the frame and this pipe and see if I can get my bolt started into the, the threaded piece that's in here. Easy as that. So what I'll do is go ahead and tighten this down a little bit just to just to keep it from flopping around and try to keep my 
other end over here lined up like I want it to be. And once I have that done, then I can take my other bolt that I already took off, and we're going to walk around to the other side and do the same thing here. But this is going to be a little bit more difficult because now I have to get the bolt started on this side, but I can see that my threaded hole is lined up where I need it to be, but it can be a little fiddly with a ball and wrench in your bolt kind of sitting at an angle like that to get it to start. But I'm going to look down in here as I'm putting it in very carefully, try not to lose the washer or anything, because it'll go down to the bottom of this frame and you got to fish it out, which is obviously not the funnest thing to do. And it looks like I'm getting it started pretty easily there, so it's cooperating with me when I'm shooting my video. <laughs> so of course, I'm just going to tighten that down. And I'm not going to tighten it down completely yet because I want to get my the bar on the other side put on before I tighten everything down. And I'm, then I'll come in with a traditional wrench or a socket with a, uh, this is a M6 hex head on here. So I get a socket M6 hex and with the wrench and get it uh, an extension, get down in there and give it a good tighten then. But yeah, what we'll do is go ahead and get the other side connected and everything tightened up and see what that looks like. As you can see, I've got the crossbars already installed and I did tighten these down rather securely with a, I had a ratchet and an extension and a M6 hex ratchet socket end. And yeah, just tighten those up real nice and firm. Not too much though, because you don't want to strip out anything as far as these inserts go in these tubes. Now, if you can see, I've already got this turned over on its side. I thought this would be a great time to go ahead and put the feet on. And I have three of these pad feet, I'm calling them, on the back already, because there's actually places for four of them. That's why we have a total of six, because we can put another one up here, and if we don't want to do the wheels, we can put them up front. We have two left for that. And it's a very simple thing putting this in. Again, I'll show you this. It's just a flathead bolt in here, and it has a nut holding it on. And of course, we have these M8 threads. And of course, it's a very simple matter of just reaching over and putting them in the inserts that are already installed in the frame and spinning them down. Now, where I'm going to end up with these, I don't know yet. So it's relative to the feet on the front, or in this case, the casters. As you can see, I already have a caster installed, right? Now, this can be a little fiddly to get them installed. I thought I'd go ahead and try the casters. I know they're not going to be as grippy as having these pads over here on the front, especially on my concrete floor. But I, I wanted to test it both ways just so I could get a relative, you know, a fix on just which is the better way. But I've got a feeling we already know which one's going to be better. But if you have to move this around and it's heavy, once you get everything on it, you're going to wish you had these casters on, I think. So, there's, you know, there's, there's compromises with everything. So what we're going to do is take this metal plate here, and you get two of them in the kit, and of course we have our caster with the threaded piece here, and that's also an M8, and it has that little thin nut on there. Now, what I'm going to do is put this plate on here like this, and then I'm just going to go into the threaded insert and get it lined up. And you, can, you can't really turn this bolt with a little bit. You can turn it a little bit to get it started with the caster, but because the caster just wants to rotate, it's hard to get it started. Not real hard, but you know it can be a little fiddly. But then once we have it started, of course, we can just come in with our 14 millimeter thin wrench, and then we start the long process of screwing this on, which can take a little while. But what I like to do is kind of grab it like this and look straight down on it, and I'll just kind of, if I can keep it on there, I'll just hand it from hand to hand like this and just keep rotating it around, and that kind of speeds up the process. But, you know, it'll slip off, and but it's still better than just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you can see I'm already done. And I'm going to give this a pretty good tighten. Now, when I do that, I tighten this up, I'm going to kind of hold this plate piece right here. I don't want it turning like this on me, right? I'm going to kind of keep it squared up so it supports like it's supposed to on the bottom of this frame. So I'm just going to kind of see if I can keep that from spinning on me when I tighten it down. It's not easy to do. Ah, but it's pretty tight there, and I think that'll work. And, of course, again, we have the lock on here so we can keep this from rolling around. It was locked in that position. Now it'll roll. But, yeah, we can lock it down. That won't happen. Again, not as much surface area once we set this up. And now it's just a matter of turning this back up. Yeah, I can get all this in the frame. And now it's flat. And, of course, the whole idea of the wheels is once we pick this up, it'll roll. This one's locked. Not going to roll. They're both locked. Okay. So now it'll roll. All right. So we'll see more of that once we get everything else set up on this. And I'm going to go to the back here where these pads are, 
and I'm going to go ahead and level this out the best I can with the pads. And yeah, that's about all you can do is level it out based on what kind of angle you were going to have as far as this whole chassis when it's sitting flat on the floor. It's cool that we have that option though, or the ability rather, to level this out because you're going to want to be as level as possible. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get to the next segment. Now we're going to install the pedal plate assembly. And the first thing we're going to install is this plate, which is going to hold the larger pedal plate. And that's going to mount on the, these two holes up here and the two holes down there. This again is the angle adjustment piece and it's going to fit in between our cross members here. And I kind of slide this through here like that and just set it down for now. Now we're gonna be using these 60 millimeter bolts here, socket cap head units with one washer. And of course it's very simple. We're just gonna be going through the holes here, coming out the other side and attaching our nut. And our nut is this grooved nut, which is a locking nut. So it kind of digs into the metal when we torque down on it. So yeah, that's probably never gonna come loose. Now, the only thing we gotta figure out, and I have to guesstimate, <laughs> make a guesstimate at this point, because I'm not sure exactly where I wouldn't want the pedals. So, I'm just going to kind of put it in the middle. And again, just take one of the bolts, put it in through the holes, and then I'll line up the other hole on the bracket and push it through. And I'll come over here on this side, which you can't see, and do the exact same thing. Find the hole on this side, there it is. Right, this can be a little fiddly getting it through the tube, but if you've ever done something like this, not too bad. And then I can just let it rotate down. And go ahead and start one of the nuts, which by the way, you're gonna have to back this bolt out a little bit to clear the lip on this piece here. This lip is in the way on the edge here. It's cut away. It's got a cut out on it. But if you pull it bolt out just about that much, then you can go ahead and get your nut started. Then you can go ahead <laughs> and get your nut started. There we go. And once you have it started, the bolt will not hit that and you'll have access to it. So we're going to do the same thing on this side real quick just to make sure this doesn't come off when I'm assembling the rest of it. All right. So then we're very simple, swivel it up and get the angle that you think you want. I'm gonna be using a set of G29 pedals because I'm testing out this load cell-like modification on it and this is a good time to do it. So I thought I'd go ahead and use those because there's gonna be a lot of pressure on the brake pedal from this mod and I wanna see if this can handle it. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and put the other bolt on the other side and I've got the angle for that because I know the Logitech pedals have a pretty decent lean back angle on them kind of laid back as, as I call them and that's going to help correct that I hope at this angle and I'm only one, I've only got one more hole left to go to get the angle that I want so hopefully that is going to do the trick all right we got our bolt started I'm not going to cinch this down tight yet because now we're going to come back and put the plate on top of this and see how that goes now we're ready to put the plate onto our angle adjustment assembly there and it's a very simple thing i'm just going to pull the plate up here it's kind of heavy so you just want to make sure that you have a good hold of it and we're going to be using these 20 millimeter long m8 bolts socket head caps just like we've been using it's a six millimeter hex and one washer very simple here we're just going to line this up into the inserts and basically just get them started and you might have to wiggle it around a little bit, but it looks like these holes are lining up rather well. And it helps to have your bolts handy <laughs> so that you're not looking around for them when you need them the most. Just like that. Now I'm just going to run these down a little bit so that it kind of holds the tray. Because I want to see how far up I can come with this tray for the next piece of the assembly I want to use. And that is the reinforcement assembly that will hold this part of the tray. See these two slots have we have here are made just for that. And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that here and then we're going to move to the next shot and I'll show you how I install those reinforcing bolts. They're like 110 millimeters long 
so that when we're pressing down on our brake pedals, that we're going to be pressing forward, obviously. We don't want this bending at all when we press. So they've got some supporting bolts that go in here, which is a great idea, and you'll see that when we get to the next segment. Now we're going to put in our reinforcement bolts that go into the slots up here and over here, obviously, both sides. And here's what we're dealing with here. This is a 110 millimeter bolt. I'll give you a close up of here. Very long socket head cap. And one, one thing to note about these bolts is I did have to take the nuts and run them down one of the bolts all the way before it would easily screw onto the bolt. And that's usually because of the coating process they use on these bolts at the factory. Sometimes it goes on just a little bit too thick. So it's good just to go ahead and run them down to make sure they're loose enough when you first install them. Now, we have to get the bolt into here. Goes into slot, as you can see. And then it's going to go down into our little threaded piece down in there. And you can move this back and forth a little bit, the tray, obviously. Well, I got a little tight there. There we go. And you want to make sure this is loose and you can get it started before you do anything else. Now I'm going to pull it right back out because we're going to need some nuts on here. And we're going to be using two nuts on each bolt, all right? And these are the same nuts we've been using before. They used to have the teeth on them, so they dig into the metal. And you want one to go on facing in the upwards direction, okay? Like this. And once you have it on there, you can just spin it on to where you want. But remember, we still have to get the bolt in. So I just want to show you guys what I was going to be doing here. So the bolt goes in. I get my washer, make sure the flat is facing up because I want it to clamp against the bottom of this when the bolt goes in, right? So I go ahead and get the bolt started on that. And I can kind of just push it through. And then I'm just going to, this is what you want. You want it easy to spin like that. So you don't spend all day trying to make this thing go up high enough to where you want it to be. So I'll just keep doing that until I get in the vicinity of where I want to be. I don't want to get it all the way in yet because I still have to get it started, right? Now, I'm going to take another nut, because we went two for each one, same nut, but this time the flange is going to be facing down, because I want it to clamp down on this surface right in here, all right? So I put that one on with the flange facing down, and you'll see how that looks right there, okay? So we got one up, and we got one down, simple enough. And I just need enough to get, well, I can go ahead and run this one all the way up if I really want to, but it all depends on how far the angle is on this plate right here to where we're going to want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and get it started and run it down. Bear with me as I twist this down here. We don't have that far to go. There we go. That should do it right there. I want to put just a little tension on this, not much. And then I can run this bottom one down and tighten that up. And of course, correspondingly, we want the top one to go up with the flange facing up. So that's going to lock up against the plate here between the head of this bolt, the socket head cap sitting up here. Then that'll ensure that this can't go down and this is tight down here so it's not going to go anywhere either. This is a great idea to add support to this tray up here. It really is going to reinforce the tray as far as when you push hard on the pedals. And yeah, this is a great idea. I really like that they decided to come out with a solution for that because I, I've, I don't know how many pedal trays I've used before that, yeah, as soon as you press on them, if you have a certain angle on them, they just bend. And that's just, that's unacceptable, really. You really don't want that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this bolt on. And then when we come back, we'll see how, and tighten everything up. Yeah, we'll basically tighten everything up because I still don't know exactly where I'm at with my pedals yet. But I'm going to put this one in and then we'll come back and see how all that looks. So now I have the other bolt on and... Obviously, this is going to make it a much stiffer platform now. So, yeah, easy to install this. And again, I haven't made my final adjustments on this yet because I don't know where I'm at until or where I'm going to be or what I'm going to need as far as reach or length until I actually have the pedals mounted. So what we'll probably do now is just move on to the wheelbase mount. Now we can put our DD wheelbase mount on. And this is going to be a very simple thing, too. It actually has the inner edge here. You can actually kind of sit this on here like this. And it'll sit there nice and steady for you. So it helps you put your bolts on, which is kind of nice, actually. And we're going to be using these 50 millimeter long bolts. 
Let me see right here. And of course, we're going to be using the usual nut that has the serrations on it. So it cuts into the metal and grabs everything. And these will be on the inside, which you won't be able to see when I'm putting this on. But a very simple operation here. And the first one I'm going to put in is the back hole here. And all I got to do is pick it up. Remember, we've got two holes here. Put this on. And just get your holes lined up. I kind of like to look around the edge here and see where that hole is. And then, of course, you got to kind of wiggle it around to get it through this tube and out the other end, which, again, can be fiddly sometimes, but it helps. You can rotate this out of the way and look underneath and take a look to see where it's at. And there we go. It went through that time. And I'm going to go ahead and take the other one, even though I don't know what my angle adjustment is going to be yet. If I'm just going to kind of look at it right here and, and see if it's flat or not. And let's see, which one is that? I think that'll be this one. Okay. And I'll look under, inside again. And there it is. Go ahead and put my nuts on. And just spin them on kind of loosely. This still doesn't look like... Okay, there is a, a little bit of play in the back nut here. So that's what I was looking at. Okay. Because it didn't look like it was the right angle for me. You know, I might be changing this. You know, it's just one of those things when you're first putting this stuff on, you really don't know. Then we'll go over to this side and do the same thing that we did before. Kind of look around the edge here. Looking for our hole. And push it all the way through and do the same thing with this one. And I believe that's the same. Yeah, that's the same angle. All right, so yeah. How simple can it be, right? Now we've got the wheel plate mounted. So yes, this is really not complicated at all to get this wheel plate mounted. And when it's tight, yeah, I think this is going to be pretty good as far as how stiff it is. The, it, the only question I have about wheel stands and direct drive wheels is when you're pushing on it and using it, how, how is it going to, and of course this is shaking because I don't have it tight yet, how is it going to feel uh, when you're driving it? And that's obviously a very important part. Not only that, but now that I have this mounted, I can look down here at the pedal tray and try to determine where my feet are going to be based on the seat I have. So this is a good time to take another look at the pedal tray down here. And because it can roll around, I'll show you that. So I'll take another look at this and put my chair in front of it. And if I need to adjust it, I will at this time. Because, yeah, now I've got a pretty good idea where I'm going to be up here. So what we'll do next is go ahead and get to the shifter mount. Now I'm going to attach the shifter mount arm, and that fits underneath here. And if you'll remember, we've got some holes in here that are tapped for M8 threads. All right. So this is going to fit on here just like that. So the flange goes in, and we've got a couple of nuts. It's very simple, really. Not much to this. The only question is, where do you want this as far as the height? And I really don't know yet, but it's only two bolts. So yeah, how hard can it be to adjust for this, right? So I'm going to take, these are 15 millimeter bolts. Again, the same thing we've been using all along, but just shorter. And that has an M6 hex on it. And we're using a washer. I'm going to go ahead and put it in to the flange here before I insert it. And then I'm just going to go to the highest one because I really don't know where I'm, I need to be. So I'm just kind of rolling the dice here and just going with one that works. So we got the highest one there. And of course, the spacing should be correct on this bracket. Go ahead and get it to where it's not jiggling around too much here. Making a lot of noise. All right. So everything, if everything is nice and machined properly, then this bolt should fit in here without any issue. So let's take a look. And yep. Nice. Huh? Now also, as I'm putting this in, or rather spinning this bolt in, I'll notice that this is not level. I guess you can see that on the video over here. Um, it's pointing downwards. <laughs> and the reason is the caster's up front, right? Now, the casters obviously are, are set. There's no way for me to change the level on those. And But the rear has these pads on it on the bottom that we saw before. But they're all the way extended right now. I mean, I don't have much left. If I pick this up and just spin this a little bit, it comes right out. So... We don't have a lot left here trying to get this thing level. So I'm not sure why they didn't go with a smaller caster because it would just seem to me that we would want this to sit level. But 
again, once I put, uh, I'll probably take the casters off later on and put the pads back on and then it will sit level and this will be level two. So it's just one of those things when you're putting, you know, when I'm assembling something, a kit, and I look at how it's done and, I, you know, it makes you wonder why. <laughs> it seems like, you know, that's the casters they had in stock, so that's what they used. Instead of getting a, a proper height caster or a smaller one, you don't need a real big one. Uh, if, all you're going to do is be picking this thing up like this and wheeling it around, right? So you don't need a real big one. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things that makes me wonder. Um, because or make this longer down here to compensate so you can get this thing level all right anyway so it's going to work either way but i'd like to see things leveled up all right so now we've got this part on then we can go put the actual shifter plates on and see how that goes now i'm going to finish assembling the shifter bracket assembly if you will <laughs> and it's pretty simple we've got three holes and it's going to match the three holes on this thing then i can just Snug this up a little. I don't shake as much. And I'm leaving it loose because I may be changing <laughs> the height of it. So simple, really. Just put this on like this, right? And we have three 60 millimeter long bolts. We're going to be putting a washer on it. And we're going to be going through this way. And we're going to catch the nut on the other side. So simple enough, just like we've been doing all along here. Very simple. We just go ahead and put the bolts in first while everything's nice and loose. That tends to... Let the bolts slide in a little easier when I do that. Especially when we're going through tubes. And then, of course, it's just a matter of coming in with our nuts. And we're using the same nuts all along in this build with the serrated edges. And this feels a little... There it goes. You want to be careful when you're starting these, you know, these nuts on bolts with any kind of screw or bolt, really, for that matter. You don't want to cross-thread it or anything. And that, that went on pretty easily. Now... Go ahead and run these up a little. Now this plate here that we saw before is what's going to be holding the shifter and let's go down in front here. <laughs> the shifter and a handbrake if you want that. I might try that configuration. I don't know yet. But I think the best way to go about putting this on is mount your shifter and your whatever it is, your handbrake or whatever, on this first. And then we're just going to set it down in here. All right. Set it down these holes here and get it to line up. I know this will line up because, oh, wait a minute, it goes. Let's try it this way. There we go. And it lines up like that. And remember, we have two bolts, or rather nuts on the bottom here, and we're going to pull these nuts off before we put this on. All right, so I want to take all four of these off. And make sure you don't lose the bottom ones. Make sure they stay on. And I'll go ahead and take this one off. And this is going to give us the nuts we need to go all the way through here when we set it on here, like so. And we still have two nuts on here. The, the reason, or rather one nut, the reason we're leaving these nuts on here, they're acting as spacers. So this doesn't just sit flat down on here. For whatever, and that's the way they wanted to do it. So yeah, if, it works, if that's the way it works, that's fine. Then we come back in here and we'll put our nuts on once we have everything else mounted. And also it gives us some spacing for the nuts that are going to be on the bottom here holding whatever we're screwing on here, right? So you want that to, to again, this is the easier way to do it. Just have this assembly off at first and then we can mount everything to it and then pop it on here, whichever way. I think it goes this way or, yeah, it goes either way. And yeah, if, if you have something that needs a, more space than just this one nut on here, then, yeah, um, you're going to need a bigger a bolt, a longer bolt, rather. And that would space it up even higher. So at least it gives you the options. But this is a special bolt that's in, in this plate here. It's not something that you're going to go down to the hardware store and buy. It looks like it's probably, let's see. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So it's just a little flat head on that. So I don't think, yeah where you would buy something like that in a longer size. So, you're kind of stuck with it, I guess. No adjustment there. But it has to be flat here on this side because we're mounting our hardware to it. Right, simple enough. So when I get back, I'm going to, let's see, what have we got left to do here? Actually, I think that's about it, isn't it? And we get the shifter, yeah. So this is all we've got. Set this back up here. And don't lose my four nuts, of course. Stick them right there. And then what I'm probably going to do now is all we have left to do is go ahead and put what we're going to be using as far as pedals 
wheelbase and shifter. And yeah, we'll come back after, and if I run into any problems, I'll probably do some video on it. If everything goes smoothly, I probably won't and just show you the results. So here's my final configuration for testing out this DD wheel stand. And I'm gonna run a Podium DD1 motor or wheelbase. I got the Porsche wheel for that with the endurance module on it. And we have some controls over here. We got a sequential shifter right here. And this is from A-Logs and also a handbrake from them to see how this works. Now, if you'll notice when I'm manipulating this, there's some sideways movement here. See how it moves sideways? You can kind of bump it. But remember that most of the stress when you're, we're using this is gonna be straight back because I'm pulling this way on it, right? But it still has some movement, you can see that. Which is, I'm not surprised by this because remember we have a three millimeter plate here for the flange right? So that's not going to give us the best, you can actually see it moving there. And I have this tightened down as tight as I can get it without stripping something out or fear of stripping them something out. So yeah, you can see that we got some movement there in the tube, in the flange rather, where it joins the tube. Okay. Uh, another thing here that I wanted to point out is in a lot of these things you don't see until you actually have it up and configured the way I'm going to be running it. But if you looked here, there's a gap in here between the tube that goes in here and the tube that holds it, right? And I'm trying to get on the side here so you guys can see that gap. And I measured that out to be almost three millimeters, all right? Or just about three millimeters. I would call it that. Now, the concern I have here is you can see there's no gap on the side over here. And if we go over here, there's a little bit gap there. Now, even though we have two bolts, and you can see them right there. The wire's out of the way that actually hold this upright, that's holding our wheelbase, right? Even though we have two bolts there, um, I'm just not crazy about having that kind of gap in it in the front because it's, it's just gonna give us some motion. It's gonna, if it was tight here, it would help support this bar from being pushed forward. Now, of course, we're, we're turning the steering wheel and we're rotating it, right? So you're, you're probably thinking, well, that, what difference does that make? But, if you're, I use a pushing style of steering because it uses better muscle groups and you don't get as tired with these direct drive wheels if you do that. And yeah, so I'll be pushing up against this. And when I do that, it's going to put stress right here on these bolts, right? Because this is going to want to push forward going that way. So, you know, it just gives me a little, it, it gives me pause to look at that and go, well, you know, with a direct drive wheel and the high torque that these things can put out, I'm just not, I'm just not real confident in how long this joint is going to be able to hold because we just have two M8 bolts in this three millimeter tube here. That's all this is, is three millimeter. And of course we have threads tapped in there, right? So it's just one of those things that I, you know, I'm thinking out loud here. Um, I'm not just, I wish that that was a tighter fit there. It would help support everything if it was. Anyway, uh, the pedals, you can see I have a, Logitech set of pedals on here. And before you say, hey, how come you're just using a, a light pedal set like that? Well, this Logitech, this particular one, has a true brake mod in it, which is modifies the brake pedal, and it makes it much, much stiffer than the original brake pedal, and it works off a pressure system. It has a linear potentiometer there, but that's for another review. But anyway, I'll be pushing very hard on that brake pedal. Now, the pan or the tray that we're mounted to is all secured now. And you can see that I have a lot of space here available for this groove here for adjustment. But up here, I don't have a lot. And I'm actually stretching a little bit more than I'd like to be able to use the steering wheel because of the offset on the steering wheel from the motor. And that's just the way the Fanatec stuff is. I would like to see this slot that we're using to support the back of this tray from coming down. It won't flex down as we're pushing hard on the pedals. If they had moved this up to the end here, that would have given me enough room to slide this down further because we got plenty of room in these slots, right? But they, it's a little bit short here. And again, I'd like to see this all the way out to here. I don't know why they stopped here. I mean, it would have, you know, another 50, 60 mil would have done the trick for my reach on the pedals and made it much more comfortable. But, you know, it is what it is with these things. So anyway, so everything else 
is secured and tight. Uh, let's see, anything else we want to talk about here? I think that's it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you're probably noticing I have some strapping on my seat over here that I'm using or my chair because typically this is how uh, you're going to be using a chair, preferably without wheels, of course, to sit in front of this wheel stand, right? And I don't have one like that that's low enough, and this thing does sit low to get me the correct position that I was trying to get off of this. And anyway, so in the end, I ended up using these straps, these cinching straps, so that when I'm sitting in the chair and I'm pushing against that brake pedal, I'm going to be putting some pressure on that, that this will stop me from moving away from the frame. Rudimentary, but good enough for testing for my review purposes. If I was going to have this as my main unit, then I would have a different setup. I also cannot push this up against the wall, but I'm not too worried about that. With these pads on here, and you notice I've got the pads on the front now instead of the wheels. Now I'm going to show you a shot here of me sitting in this thing with the wheels on the front of the casters. And you can see the down angle that is presented to me, even with the wheel angle almost all the way up. And it's just, it's just a sloping angle towards the driver's position which I did not like, and uh, it's not optimal. And yeah, so I went ahead and pulled the casters off and put the feet on. Now I, and, and then you can see another shot here. With that setup, it's nice and level now, as we see here in the video that we're actually looking at. So this is, is definitely better. Not only that, but it's much more solid sitting on these front pads. Remember, we've got four of them in the back here, right across the back. And then we've got two of them up front. And on this concrete, with the weight, obviously, of this direct drive wheel and everything else that I have on here, it helps keep it planted. But if I was going to keep, back to my original statement or thought, I would probably have something in front of this to keep it from moving forward, all right? In the heat of battle, that might happen. I don't know. And, of course, on the back part, I would have some kind of a chair that I had some kind of a stop in the back of it, maybe a piece of two-by-four or something behind it so it couldn't move backwards or just work out some kind of a solid mount on the wheelbase, or rather, this wheel stand base. And you can see they actually have some screws in here, some threaded inserts. So, yeah, they could actually make something with threaded inserts that comes back to the back here, can capture your seat, maybe go across the back here and keep your seat from moving backwards. That would be cool if they had an accessory like that, but I uh, couldn't find anything when I looked. But, yeah, that's something that's, that's possible, I'm sure. Other than that, we're all ready to go. And now it's just a matter of getting all my wires hooked up and I can have to turn my monitors around. Of course, I'm going to have to lower them a lot to get them where I want them. But that's why I have the monitor stand like this that's so high, so I can use it on any of my configurations for sim cockpits. So there we have it. And yeah, so now we'll just go ahead and get everything hooked up. And next, what I'll be doing is, yeah, we're just going to drive, right? So here we are in iRacing in the Ferrari 488 GT3 at Sebring, the usual testing setup. Now, First off, before we get started here, we're looking for flex in the wheel deck, in the system itself, like shifters, and any movement in the system. Now, I've really given this wheel stand a big help here by strapping the chair to the wheel stand. Um, normally, you won't do that. In fact, I've kind of got a mini sim rig setup going here now because when I press hard on the brake pedal and my body pushes back against the seat, it doesn't go anywhere. But you can still have a board back there to support that or be up against a wall and have the front of this, uh, the wheel stand itself up against the wall or something, and you get kind of the same results, I would imagine. But yeah, I'm doing the best I can to help it. So that's why we don't see much movement. Also, the pads on this are on the floor. Instead, the casters are gone off the front. Don't have those on there anymore, which gives it a much better stability factor, and it also levels it out to where we need it to be, or at least where I needed it to be to feel comfortable. Right, so anyway... You can see there is some movement in the wheel decks. There is flex, and that's not to be uh, unexpected. It's meeting expectations as far as that goes I'm, if, from building this. You know, when you take the parts out of a box and you construct something, you kind of form your own opinions as you're doing that to what you're going to get. But you can see there obviously is some flex here in this deck. And again, meeting expectations. I don't think anyone would expect it not to do that, no matter what you do. And also, uh, it might have to do with how far up I have the wheel, but I'm a short guy, so I had to get it to this length to be comfortable for me. So that's another factor you might want to consider when you're looking at these things. How far up you're going to have to raise it to get the wheel comfortably in your reach and as far as the height goes. So that adds more leverage to the whole system, which will add more flex, of course. And yeah, as I talked to you before about the gaps in between the down tubes that are holding the wheel deck, 
and the actual supporting tubes of the frame. There's a pretty decent gap there, which, you know, if you're using the driving style that I do, which is a pushing, you can see it bend right there. Uh, the, the wheel deck was actually the whole thing kind of pushed up because I'm pushing against the wheel when I'm steering. So yeah, that's the kind of thing we're looking at. But I think we're meeting expectations here at this point. Um, it's doing a pretty good job as far as just getting it done. And yeah, it, it, a space saver, yeah. But yeah, it's not gonna be anything like a, a regular cockpit and, and no wheel stand will. But this one's just built a, a lot more heavier, dutier than most of them are. And you can see here, now I'm in the rally cross and I'm just doing this for the shifter and the handbrake, which are mounted to the plate. And there's only two bolts in each one of these assemblies uh, holding it to the plate because that's the only holes I could get to match up. So I just left it like that because there's movement in this plate and you can see it. Uh, if you look on the left side picture here, you can see whenever I'm, I'm messing, you can see how it's jiggling around there pretty good. And that's because of the very thin three, three millimeter flange that's on the end of this where we're mounting it to that wheel support down tube, right? So even though there's two M8 bolts in there, it's still just a bit on the thin side. And that's why we're getting that. It's actually shaking. You can see it's kind of a little shake there to it. Now, that doesn't keep me from using it. And that's obviously I'm using it here without uh, too much problem. I'm still able to use the handbrake and the shifter when I need to. But again, it's not the type of feedback you'll get from a regular cockpit setup. But again, we are managing expectations here when we know that a wheel stand, no matter if they say it's built for a DD wheelbase or not, is still going to be, at the end of the day, a wheel stand and not as good as a regular cockpit. So I'm trying to think of the person who would buy this, and I think it would be the person that just doesn't have the room, period. I mean, they are so limited in room that, that this is all they can do. And even with my chair on here and the straps holding it in with the right length on my legs, you're still getting close to sim rig dimensions here. And you're never going to get a ergonomic position like you can in a regular rig. Uh, yeah, it's not going to happen because of the way wheel stands work you know you'd have to get some chair that's sitting on the floor somewhere now this thing comes in at 300 dollars plus whatever your shipping is so you have to think for a minute 300 dollars. you know for another 70 dollars plus whatever the shipping is you can get a simlab gt1 evo cockpit which is going to be much better much better than using this wheel stand so i'm trying to think who is you know you've just got to be desperate for space to buy something like this. And again, when you add a chair to it, it's gonna be kind of longish anyway. So I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, so we'll just go ahead and get on to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on Next Level Racing's wheel stand DD. <laughs> when most people think of wheel stands, the last thing that comes to mind is mounting a high torque DD wheel to it. But this is exactly what they want you to do here. The unit is made from three millimeter thick steel tubing and plates. And as far as construction is concerned, it has good welds where we can see them and a nice finish to all the parts. It is easy to assemble and should not take you long to get up and running. This is a solid frame once it is put together. It uses large round rubber coated feet for the back and you have a choice of using casters or the same rubber feet on the front. Now, while the casters will give you mobility if you need it, the round feet are much more effective at removing unwanted movement in the chassis. There are some areas of a concern on this construction that I pointed out in the configuration testing segment. The shifter mount, where it connects to the wheel deck support tubes, is only 3 millimeter thick, which caused this mount to shake under use. The same support tubes have more space around them when inserted into the bottom assembly's female tubes than I would have liked to have seen. This puts all the forward pressure I put on the male tubes to be supported only by the two M8 bolts that are used to fix these tubes. Lastly, the flanges that have slots in them to capture the two support bolts from the front of the pedal base are not long enough to be used throughout the base's range of adjustments. Not sure how this was missed, but something like that should be fixed. Now, on to the better news. <laughs> when driving this wheel stand, I found that it was able to handle the weight and torque that a DD1 podium wheel can dish out. There was some flex in the wheel deck, but not enough to make the driving experience any less than what I expected here. I was still able to do laps at this circuit at my usual pace. Now you do have to remember, I did tie down the chair I was using to the bottom sections of the main assembly, which did provide some extra stability to the wheelbase that would not have been there otherwise. I would recommend some kind of setup like this for this particular unit and really for any wheel stand. <laughs> Another thought here 
is that the wheel stand costs $300 plus shipping. So NLR is getting into a price range for a wheel stand that is not very far away from a full-blown profile chassis like the GT1 Evo from SimLab, something that needs to be considered by the prospective buyer. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.